Hey guys, Justin from Olsen Motorsports, and today we're going to be bringing life to these super old shocks. The customer had some kind of weird things going on over here, that's why we're changing these bodies out. Instead of having a swivel, they just have whatever this fitting is, which is probably because they stripped it. You can tell inside it's all messed up. Unfortunately, we can't repair this exact body because this body is a 40 mil body and JRZ no longer makes a 40 mil body. So we got some new bodies made for these uh, in the 44 mil, which is what they make now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to swap these bodies out. And then since we have new bodies with a new bigger diameter shock body, we're going to change the piston on these as well to accommodate for the bigger shock body. We're gonna save these canisters because the canister is still good and we're gonna use these on the new shocks. And then at the end of the day, we will have a set of working new style shocks. He's gonna, you're gonna bleep that out, right? All right, back to these prehistoric jerseys that are probably older than me. I'm gonna break these down. So start off, let's pop the dust cover off. I'm gonna grab these. What is it? These are like uh, crab claw crackers, pretty much, like at a buffet. Oh, and it comes off pretty easy. Usually they don't come off that easy. I thought I was going to have to grab my hammer. Take off the dust cover. There might still be pressure in here. Should probably check for pressure. Still can't get these down. I don't know why I go to the gym. Uh, uh, we got business right here. There we go. Right here, there's a little C-clip in here that when you charge this, the guide will come up and kind of hold it in place. So you pop this out. So this is the guide. Inside the guide, if I can find some C, not it. Grab these. We have a C clip that holds in the retainer for the Merkel seal, and I'll show you the Merkel seal. It's like pretty much the most important seal on the damper. This pretty much keeps all the pressure, all the fluid inside the shock and not outside where you don't want it, and then keeps dust out, or well, keeps everything separated pretty much. And then this is what the shock rides on as well. Now that we got the guide out, there's going to be fluid. It's going to be everywhere. Just wait. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. This is fed up. This shouldn't happen. Normally, this is for the rebound adjustment. If you look really closely, there is a little ball in there. That ball should be inside a hole with the spring. And it's not. And also, this should be stuck in this groove. It should never come out, pretty much, because when uh, when this is like this, you don't have any uh, rebound adjustment. Normally, when you turn the rebound rod, you see that turning. What that does is usually, you know, when it's not broken, it would be in the groove for this nut or rebound. On the rod, there's a bunch of little holes drilled, and that controls the flow of fluid for a rebound. So as the piston rod's going back up through the shock, all the fluid's going in through these holes, going into a main hole, and then the flow of that fluid is controlled by turning this nut and sh closing all these little holes on the bottom of the piston rod. Come over here, dump it all out. Oh, damn, it's clean. That's some pretty clean fluid for these really old shocks. That's interesting. So let me just pop the swivel. <laughs> and let's clean out some oil so that our ultrasonic cleaner doesn't get a bunch of oil in it. And then I'm gonna crack 
the other swivel, and the canister. Now we're going to break down the canister again using our aluminum body clamp so we don't mar any of the anodizing on the uh, canister. When we're going to bring life to these really old prehistoric shocks, we're going to be keeping the canisters and the piston rod, and that's about it. And of course the valving and stuff is going to go along with it, but we're going to change the piston so they can match the new diameter of uh, the new shock bodies. Then I'm going to hit this with my purse. There we go. Let's put this to the side. And we're going to pop out the divider piston from the canister after I take the shader valve out. <laughs> If I were to aim this up, how far do you think it would go? <laughs> Too many expensive parts. And on the canister head, <laughs> we have uh, the compression adjustment over here. And I'm going to go ahead and take off the knob using getting the set screw out of here. And then again, a little spring inside the knob over here with a check ball. And then we're going to remove the compression stem, which is this bad boy in here. If I can get it out with my finger. Let's grab that special socket again to remove the retainer. Retainer, and we're going to smack this again. There's another little shim in here that keeps fluid moving in one direction. Guys, a little pry, pry tool over here. Let's move the X ring from the divider piston because we're going to always replace that. And we're going to disassemble the end of these, uh, of the hose over here so that we can change the O rings on the swivels. Now, one thing to be really careful of is these uh, C-clips. They're really small. If you bend them too much, they won't go back to shape. So you just got to bend it just a little bit to pop over the opening. Pop that out. Oh, fuck. Just like this one, you see how wide it is? How loose it is? Whoever did this before, they probably like spread this way too wide. Yeah, I'm going to change this one out. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and remove the O-rings from the swivel ends, super dirty swivel ends. Actually, this one, this one's pretty sanded down. It's damaged. We're going to replace the whole swivel. And this one's still okay. All right, we're pretty much stripped down and... Uh, Everything's broken down, so we can definitely go to the ultrasonic cleaner now. All right. So over here, we're at the ultrasonic cleaner. We put all shocks through the ultrasonic cleaner after we break them down to clean them out. These can definitely clean shocks way better than any human can because it um, pretty much like it vibrates all the parts at an ultrasonic frequency, I guess, that allows all, uh, forces all like the dirt and grime to come out. And it's also in a solution as well that cleans everything off really nicely. All right, so we got a basket over here. I'm gonna load this basket up with all the parts from the shocks, and then we're gonna dump this in the ultrasonic cleaner and run it for 15 minutes. So we got all the parts here in, the, in this tray, and I'm just gonna throw it in here. 
Make sure all the fluid goes everywhere. All right, I'm gonna press the button. Go take a nap. Now we're gonna begin the reassembly of the canister. That's how I usually like to start things. I usually start by reassembling the canister first and then I'll attach the hose, put it to the body and then bleed it. After that, then I'll get the piston rod set up and then bleed that. Pretty much you're done after that. You just gotta throw the dust cover on and the guide. Here's the parts again. I laid these out so you can kind of see the order it goes in, kind of like that for the head of the canister. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this upside down. I've already replaced these O-rings just so we can save some time. So there's an O-ring on top of the canister that goes around it. That seals the canister. There's an O-ring right here. And there's a small O-ring on the compression stem right there. So we'll just replace those. So we're gonna drop the spring in first. And then I like getting a little bit of uh, lube, some grease. This is just some uh, silicone grease. Just so that you don't pinch any of the O-rings on there. Just grab this washer, make sure there's no debris on it, it's clean. Throw this on top side. And then make sure it doesn't fall off. And make sure the spring is seated correctly. Pop this bad boy in. Then you can kind of do this either ways. If you want to put this in first, or you want to put the stem in first to hold it in place, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this in, and then using the tool again, screw into the threads for the hole swivel, and using our special socket, go ahead and tighten this. Make sure it's nice and tight. Don't want that going anywhere. A little more grease just so that we don't pinch this o-ring over here and i always like to inspect everything make sure it's clean and if i have any doubts i will just use my trusty air gun just to blow anything out drop the compression stem in and then you can turn it with your fingers so it's Kind of snug up there because we're gonna have to adjust this on the dyno later. All right, the headset. Now coming to the canister, we'll inspect to make sure the inside's clean, blow it out with some air, make sure there's no dust in there. Most of these parts are super clean because they just came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Just lube up the canister. Make sure I don't pinch the tough one. the handle pistons in and then I'll fill up canister with fluid so uh -oh. make sure this o ring is lubed up Drop this on here, start the threads. Then just need a cinch. Wipe off the canister a little bit. Move that out of the way. Then we're gonna grab the hose. And we'll put the quick disconnect side towards the canister. Disconnect the canister. And this is a brand new hose for this customer, so it already has a brand new o rings and the swivel as well as a ceiling washer right here. Just tight. Which this is ready to be attached to the new body. Grab the new body, 